Hey everyone, welcome back to theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. We're coming to you live from Las Vegas, the Venetian Expo, it's HPE Discover 2023. Lisa Martin here with Dave Vellante. Our first day of coverage of three days, we're going to be having a ton of conversations, as we always do. The Cube's canon of content, Dave, it just continues. Always comes back to the data, right? It always does come back to the data. We're going to be having a great conversation with Brandon Whitelaw, who joins us, VP of Strategic Partnerships at Cumulo. Brandon, great to have you on the show. Yeah. Talk to us about what's going on at Cumulo, industry, leadership, give us all that good stuff. Yeah, thanks so much. Uh, it's great to be here. As I mentioned before, long time listener, first time <laughs> caller. <laughs> um, and, you know, it's, it's, it's a great show. It's my first time at Discover. Uh, I've been at other competitive spots exactly here before, um, and it's a fantastic put together show, really insightful. We're loving it. Um, great traction with customers coming to the booth and being able to talk about what we have related to being able to scale anywhere and help with the data challenges that customers are facing. Um, you know, Cumulo now is five years in a row in Gartner, uh, Gartner's you know, magic quadrant and the leader quadrant, most innovative in that space. And it really comes down to predicated on the ability to help customers in a purely actual software defined way, yeah. take advantage of hardware innovation as rapidly as great companies like HPE can put it out, to be able to go you know, and, and go after their, their challenges related to putting their data wherever they need it, whether it be, as we heard today, on, on the edge, uh, in the data center, or in the cloud, or where I really think you know, the future is, which is in a hybrid topology. And that's one of the things yeah. that Cumulo has done early on. You guys were sort of leaned into that cross cloud. Uh, it was an early example of what we called super cloud. We actually pointed to Cumulo as hmm, a consistent experience, whether yeah. you're on-prem or you know, across clouds. But what about the, the challenges of unstructured data? I thought they were all solved by you know, oh. 2023. What are, the, totally. what, <laughs> what are the issues that customers are having? Is it just the amount of data just keeps growing? And, you know, the old three yeah. Vs or five Vs or whatever yeah. it was, what's, the, <laughs> yeah. what's your take? Volume, velocity, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I think the interesting thing about it is that it continues to evolve more and more into primary high value workloads. You know, once upon a time, unstructured data was kind of your back office IT home directories and file shares. And for the most part, we see that transitioning towards uh, better, uh, you know, programs to be able to, to, to collaborate like Office 365, OneDrive, Google Drive, et cetera. Um, where we see most coming out now is customers really struggling with trying to figure out how to you know, modernize these workloads to be able to kind of buy the base and rent the peak, so to speak, of private and public cloud and be able to have the same simple, seamless, scalable uh, experience for that data anywhere they want to put that data where it, it's demanded of them. You know, whether or not they have uh, artificial intelligence, data scientists wanting to use a particular algorithm comes out, you know, Google one day, Amazon the next day, uh, and they have to have their data there and ready for it, or they have to have it on-prem where they know that they can have a consistent controlled experience and leverage all the goodness that you know, GreenLake has to offer. So we really help customers uh, really be able to do any of that without compromise. And, and in fact, it, it's, I saw it from both sides. I saw from you know, over a decade of, of having you know, best in class on-prem scale out technology, and then in the cloud for three years at AWS, seeing customers trying to move it there from the other direction. And the reality is, is that it's, it's kind of having to be cloud smart. Where does it make mo most, the most sense? And that can change from month to month, right. depending on what's going on in the department you're talking to. Um, and so to be able to do that without compromise, not like a toy implementation in the cloud, but like the full actual experience without compromise that's effective from a cost, performance, and scale really helps. And where are these customer conversations these days? Is this at the sea level in terms of managing this, these growing volumes of unstructured data, being able to have access to the right data, but from a cost perspective and from a sustainability perspective, where are you talking with customers these days? Well, so they're really getting it on both sides. So, you know, core IT is getting squeezed as always to do more with less. So they want simplicity, they want efficiency, they want the ability to consolidate more workloads to have less, you know, fewer things to manage. And on the other side, they're tr that, that same organization is trying to funnel as much money as possible into agile, flexible, next-gen workloads and have those deployed, again, wherever it makes most sense at that time. And you know, 94% of companies are, of enterprise accounts are, are in cloud, and some 80 some odd percent are multi-cloud. And the complexities of having a different experience everywhere and a different way to, to manage and store that data is really, really challenging, and that adds to expense. Yeah. And so ultimately being able to do that uh, 
you know, in a, in a more modern approach that reduces cost quite a bit yes. and bridge the gap between that kind of strategic CIO level and the storage team who still needs to govern, secure, and control it and provide that real-time file system analytics on, on, on any side of that equation it helps across the board there. You talked about buy the base, rent the peak. Yeah. So I like that. It sounds very cloud-like. <laughs> um, or even more so GreenLake-like. Right? Yeah. So yeah. do you approach that with partners or do you also, are you tempted to or do you basically do it through a Cumulo interface with, with clients? Yeah, so we, we're 100% partner uh, driven us in how we go to market. And what we find is that there's there's actually two different types of engagements based on what the, where the customer's at in their journey of being able to, to leverage cloud appropriately. So usually we see that the trusted, um, you know, guided IT professionals that help resell traditional hardware that are fantastic partners with HPE helping with the majority of that. And then we also see cloud SI consultants coming in to try to help figure out the best way to optimize cloud where necessary. And you know, we, because of how we're licensed, this is pure software, we don't have any proprietary hardware, it doesn't make it, you know, we can take advantage of the newest, greatest thing that HP comes out with tomorrow, uh, or public clouds, and it makes it so that you really have a tremendous amount of agility and flexibility to, to help with that. And then the partners, of course, can help guide it, because especially when, when doing a hybrid topology, it's, it's almost, as sad as it is to say, to be a storage guy, it's almost never about actually just the storage. Uh, On-prem, it's kind of like Indiana Jones, like how do I swap out one thing for the next thing and don't change anything out. But with cloud, especially hybrid cloud, it's, it reminds me of like the Martian. Like, it, like, like how, how do you go about figuring out how to science this thing um, to, to be able to make it so you, you have it in the right place at the right time and you find the right topology and you, you need experienced cloud providers to understand the application side of things. So we leverage both. I love that you just dropped two awesome movies, The Martian and Indiana Jones. <laughs> in the spirit of movies and Easter eggs, yeah, yeah. you mentioned one a minute ago, I mentioned it in the teaser for your segment. Yeah. We know Scale Out, we talk about it all the time. Cumulo's Scale Anywhere. Yeah. That's the new It Girl. What, what does that mean? And why, and well, why does it matter? We see it as, a, as, as really an evolution, and you, you know, I mean, you guys have seen the, the ebbs and flows of IT, right? Of, of centralization, decentralization, and you know, all the things that have happened. And we, I, I was part of the journey of, of the beginning of Scale Out. So, you know, back in the day, and, and going from a scale up filer to actual scale out, and, and that, that's, that's really uh, the core foundation that started with Cumulo. But what we found as an opportunity is to be able to take that same experience and just go a level further, which is if I just zoom out a bit from the data center, and now I'm looking at edge and cloud and multi-cloud, it's, it's really being able to scale that same experience and capability in any of those domains. So it's like a true, am I correct? It's true global namespace, but not confined within a data center. It's actually yeah. So the the same experience, the same performance, the same uh, you know flexibility and agility in any of the three major hyperscalers that you get on prem. Again, not kind of a, a toy implementation. Yeah. Uh, joking, I, I kind of sometimes relegate it to like a, I don't know food that you get at a movie theater. Um, generically, like, you, you don't go out of your way to go to the movie theater to eat the nachos there. That but, is true. But if you're there, <laughs> you eat it because you, you're not allowed to bring other things in, and that's a lot of the file options in cloud today, even from established on-premises vendors. They're very limited in scale, performance, and cost. I kind of jokingly say if you were to take any of those solutions, wrap it in a box, and try to sell it on-prem, you kind of get laughed out the door. But in our circumstance, it's, it's not. It's actually just the same. In fact, in some circumstances, faster performance in cloud than on-prem. Yeah. And with what HPE has done from a flexibility and agility and, and cost modeling perspective, they're really combining the best of both worlds. And from a technology perspective, we're a perfect fit there. Why do you think that is? Is it just uh, is it the maturity of the stack? I mean, the storage is hard, right? It, you know, it takes years, maybe even sometimes a decade to mature your stack, we know yeah. this. Yes. Is it, but cloud's been around for a while, you know? Yeah, and so yeah, yeah. why do you think it is that their stacks are somewhat deficient or actually largely deficient yeah. to, you know, not only Cumulo, but a, take us, pick your storage company that's been around for a long time. They've got better product, more functional, more yeah. features. They, like you said, they get kicked out of the enterprise if they, yeah. if they actually tried to offer the, the the movie theater food. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I hope that takes up. No, uh, yeah. as an analogy. So I, I think what it comes down to is the, the tale of two cities. So you have kind of legacy vendors who started with their, their software stack 20, 30 years ago that really are, are in a situation a lot of customers in where they look at it and they say, the best I can do is lift and shift 
the existing thing I have and change as little as possible to put it there. And because I can't control the underlying hardware stack, which is actually where I get most of my money anyways, um, I, I'm gonna just try to get kind of the same experience, but you know, try to fit that square peg in a round hole as much as possible. And it's, it's really limited because of that. On the other end of the scale with the hyperscalers, they predominantly invested in block and object. Um, now, admittedly, misguidingly thinking that all the file will just transition one of those two ways. Not realizing that with the advent of like AI and ML, which is predominantly done on file, and if you, if you look at, uh, you know, in bioinformatics and media entertainment, this is all file, and, and it's all been growing the whole time cloud's been growing. In fact, it's the fastest growing segment of those three while cloud has been growing. And, and so, the largest. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and so, you know, where we see this huge opportunity is 95% of the unstructured data on premises is file but less than 5% in the cloud is. Right. And so file's really the final frontier. It is the anchor tenant, as customers have told me, the anchor tenant on-prem that is keeping them from being able to move workloads because there's just such a gap there. Now recently, in the last couple years, the hyperscalers have started to really focus on this through partnerships. Um, for example, we have the Azure Native Cumulo offering, which is Azure's only native integrated portal launch storage opportunity. Um, and on top of it, we have more coming related to AWS and Google, but the, the the ability really is presents itself where block and object being mostly application connected without humans touching it, it seem to just be easier, I think, along the way. And file is, is complex. The file system owns a lot of things that normally a block and object system don't. And that's why you have so many variants. There is no, unfortunately, there's not one size fits all there. Um, and customers have preference and use cases change. No compression algorithm for <laughs> experience, as yeah. one famous cloud CEO once yeah. said. <laughs> what, what about AI? I mean, given yeah. the thrust, and it, you know, AI was invented last year. I, I <laughs> joke, yeah, late last year. But um, but given all the focus on AI yeah. and the marriage of AI and file, as you just pointed out, how do you how do you guys you know Cumulo, HPE, how do you you know think about that and where sure. do you see it going? Well, a couple things. One, uh, fortunately, uh, although I was not here to take credit for whatsoever for it, uh, Cumulo was very early in that game. We're actually just being a consumer of AI. So a, a, a deep machine learning algorithm to help optimize how it caches data between spinning disk and SSD, just tremendously high cache hits that actually is very well translated into how we operate in the cloud as well. So 10 years plus of maturing that model and using it to make the storage better. So it's actually a really early example of kind of eating your own dog food in that way. Uh, you know, a 4K heat map of the entire file system is very hard to do unless you plan to do it from day one. So that's, that was there. I think in addition to that, what we see is a lot of customers now in this arms race to figure out how to implement and integrate this into their business and get access to the, the right appropriate tools for it. And a lot of times what it comes down to is this hybrid topology. So how do I go test and be agile and, and, and try new things very quickly in the cloud? And then if it gets production and, and gets going really big, Sometimes it makes sense to actually pull that back down on-prem into a GreenLake cloud where you can control the cost characteristics, the performance characteristics, the maybe data sovereignty and locality characteristics. And so again, having that hybrid topology in the reverse sometimes, I had a customer tell me their, their um, you know, incubation chamber is always cloud, but the moment the, product, the workload goes production, they bring it on-prem because they know that it, you know, it comes down to variability. If variability is very high, cloud works great. If variability is low and consistent, you can almost always save more money back on-prem. I think a lot of people confuse that for repatriation. It's really just smart, you know, cloud smart, I guess, is yeah. you know, what that yeah, is. Yeah, and there's it. a lot of that going on. So do you uh, actually specifically sort of optimized for GPUs? Have you been doing that for a while? And, yeah, and I mean, the, the nice thing is, uh, as kind of an accidental architectural benefit, so to speak, before this was a massive workload for most customers, most traditional file systems struggle with the, the simultaneous read threads needed by all these GPU cores. You know, the, the core count, even in a one U uh, HPE box out here, can be 25, 30,000 cores of CUDA cores looking for threads. And traditional file systems have a, a limitation on that. They hold a memory handle on every single one. We don't. And so it allows us to scale to the absolute tip performance of the whole system without having that kind of artist, art, you know, artificial construct in place there that many other systems do have a, have, a, have a challenge with. So that's one thing. The second thing actually where we see a huge amount of opportunity in Azure and AWS as well is that Surprisingly to me, while 99% of AI machine learning on-prem is through a file system, a high-performance NVMe file system, in cloud, it's almost none of it. 
In fact, almost all of it is built, again, with the tools they had at the time, with staging data and object, and then or holding it, sorry, an object, and then staging it into the local NVMe disk, which, by the way, they're paying per second for that GPU server. It's the most expensive byte of data you can buy in the cloud is that local disk in that GPU server, and they're you know, waiting sometimes hours to load data into it to run the query. So having a shared high-performance file system that can scale the whole data set across multiple GPUs actually accelerates time to, to learning. Uh, reduces time to, you know, to, to, be, to learn so you can move on to inference and other stages of that workload, really helps out quite a bit. And I can get that in the cloud. If I want to, if I want to access the Cumulo stack, I can do that, right? Yeah, Whether it's cloud absolutely. Or Same exact experience, native sync between the two. Like I said, you can train in cloud if, if it made sense for that period of time and then bring it back on-prem for inference or you know, use the most recent models. In anywhere that data needs to be to get the access to those tools. So the premise that HPE is putting forth is, is a couple, but basically their LLMs that they announced, LLMs in, in, in GreenLake, is essentially people are going to want to you know, train privately. It's going to be more efficiently done with you know, HPE supercomputers. Right? Presumably you want a piece of that action. Yeah, right? now, what are your course. thoughts on that? <laughs> yeah, look, I, I think it makes sense because surprisingly, the, the, the number one challenge with these models in hyperscalers today is access to the GPUs. There is such... Uh, a, a massive challenge in just getting time on these things, and the, the cost is through the roof, as you can imagine, because they can, because of the demand. Yeah. And so, I think with supply chains now getting back to where they should be, and, and things along these lines, people are realizing that um, being able to kind of experiment and try new models and community access in the cloud, but when it really time comes time to like put that thing to 100% and just go on and and train that model as hard as you can. Some of the hardware innovation that the HP has available just, just makes a total, total sense. And uh, really makes it also to where, you know, look, it, it, I'm sure the first times people went through some training uh, runs in the cloud and then you get the bill at the end, uh, it was a bit of a, you know. <laughs> and so, talking. yeah, to have a, a pre-budgeted IT experience, Again, it's a differentiation, whether on-prem or in cloud, we're, we're flat rate pricing. There's no hidden expenses. You're not charged per read or write like a lot of things. And so it really aligns value to where it matters most, which is how do you just accelerate outcomes? Last question, Brandon. Take yeah. us out with a, your favorite customer story that you think really articulates the value of what Cumulo is delivering, especially with its partnership with HPE. And if you can drop an analogy, your game is strong, I, I encourage it. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, one of the ones that's, that's most dear to my heart is actually working with a, a children's hospital in Ohio where they, unlike uh, regular hospitals, actually have a much longer retention for uh, medical imaging yep. and, and they also wanted a way to be able to, you know, get access to uh, AI, you know, machine learning models to be able to help with early tumor detection and things like this. And for HIPAA requirements, you know, it's got to be their own data set. And so they really wanted the ability to, you know, they're not masters of IT per se. Their, their focus is obviously helping kids. Um, they needed to be able to find cost effectiveness in storing the data, at the same time use that to train their models so they can get better at science. And being able to go between Azure and on-prem with GreenLake has allowed them to move that data where it is stage appropriate when it's needed to not slow down radio not slow down surgery, but also train models to develop new ways to find specifically to their demographic, their kids, that they're trying to help. And it, it's just fantastic to see the results already. Um, and and we'll, we'll, you'll hear a lot more about it, I think, uh, publicly by the end of this year, but it's, it's a great partnership. Great partnership. You just talked about how that really shines the light on the availability, the agility, the flexibility, but also on those business outcomes. And when, we, yeah. when you look at it in healthcare, the business outcomes are life and death. Thank you so much, Brandon, for yeah. joining Dave and me on the program, talking to us about what's new with Cumulo, the HPE partnership, and the outcomes that you're helping customers achieve. Great to have you. Thanks for calling in. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right. We want to thank you for watching this segment for Brandon Whitelaw and Dave Vellante. I'm Lisa Martin. But don't go anywhere because our next segment features a CUBE alumni, Greg Ernst from Intel. He's going to be joining us talking about HPE and Intel and what a successful AI deployment entails. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. <laughs>